I broke down old drunk man, stumbling down First Avenue in the rain, trying hard not to slide away. Held up mostly by his cane. With his good arm, he's supporting a girl with a swelled up foot that hurts. Slow steps moving forward and jerking and staggering back in spurts. She's hanging on tight, teeth clenched, fighting to hold back screams of pain. She hoists her broke umbrella, struggling for cover from this rain. Two poor lost souls knowing they can't do it on their own, stumbling down First Avenue together, trying hard to find a way back home. Just a broke down old drunk man and a pretty young thing in pain on the road to perdition in that godforsaken rain. That's the end of my story. I'm uh, going to go back to the beginning now and show you where we started. It's the late 1940s. I'm six or seven years old. It's a blistering hot August afternoon. I'm playing outside my grandmother's backyard in rural South Jersey. Uncle Leon comes out, he takes my hand, he walks me across the lawn down the side of the road about 20 yards. We pass our neighbor Charlie the Goat Man's house. We cross over the blacktop, head down a narrow dirt road past Chicken Yaki's house. He's that weird neighbor all the kids are scared of. I push in close to Uncle Leon's leg and hold his hand tight as we pass because Grandma told me, he'll put the malogio on you if you don't watch out. We cut to an opening in a split rail fence encircling a lawn with a long, low log cabin in the center. The old wagon wheels propped up with sticks on the lawn. Looks like a stagecoach stop in a John Wayne Western movie. As we get close to the cabin door, I can make out a small neon sign that's flashing Charlie's Log Cabin Inn. Uncle Leon slowly pushes open the heavy wooden door. I'm excited, and I have no idea that I'm about to fall down the rabbit hole forever. For a minute, I'm blinded by the darkness, but I feel the cool air on my cheeks. There's a smell of cigarette smoke, ashtrays, beer, and peanuts. I can hear a Phillies game on the radio. Eddie Wakus is on second. Richie Ashburn hits a homer and ties up the game. Ah. My eyes are slowly adjusted. I can make out a dim light over a circular bar in a large open room with hot beams of intense sunlight shooting across the floor from tiny windows. There's some boots in the back, a jukebox, a shuffleboard, cigarette machine by the door, and a pinball machine by the front wall. One of those old Gottlieb machines with little Abner and Daisy May painted on the glass, and Daisy May wearing a really low-cut, tight-fitting blouse. My uncle picks me up, sits me on the bar, and pulls up a stool. He orders a Coke for me and a beer for himself. He nods his head and he winks at me, and we share the knowing smiles of two pals on a road trip. He pops a stick match with his fingernail and he lights up a lucky strike while the barkeep draws his beer. Bartender yells over, hey kid, what's your name? I softly answer, Philip. Comes back from the register, hands Uncle Leon the beer, and he offers me a handful of nickels painted with red nail polish. <coughs> Ever played pinball, Philip? My face lights up like a neon sign. I nod a silent yeah, and I yell a quick thanks, and I leap from the bar, one handful of red nickels, one handful of peanuts, and my arms are pushed high in the air, and I'm making a, a mad dash for Daisy May, and I'm wearing a shitty grin wider than the Grand Canyon. For me, that moment's frozen in my mind forever. It's frozen in time, because it had more magic for me than any young kid in Disneyland. I knew I was home. <laughs> It's late. I'm sitting alone at the bar, working on my fourth double jack. I'm feeling pretty mellow. She leans across two seats, taps me on the shoulder, stares me dead in the face, and slurs out, you look like Pablo Picasso. <laughs> She's pretty. I guess late 30s, early 40s, maybe. Sculpted cheekbones, a great body packed in tight black leather. Her hair is long and straight and dyed black with bangs almost covering those haunted, crazy eyes. It's exactly the woman I've always been a sucker for. Mm -hmm. Pablo Picasso, yeah, I bet you get that all the time, huh? Not really. <laughs> she spots my fancy camera sitting on the bar. She says, hey, you're a photographer? I say, sometimes. Mostly I tell stories. She flashes a broad Cheshire cat grin and says, me too. And she drifts off into some rambling drug story with a bunch of lame attempts at being funny. You know, everything you say seems to have some sardonic twist at the end, like a comedian or something. She smiles up at me and says, well, that's because I am a comedian. Really? What kind of comedy do you do? She says, Dada. Yeah. 
<laughs> really? A da-da comedian? Could she really be that hip? Come on. She says, what kind of comedy do you do? I said, I'm not a comic. I tell stories. And she coyly replies, well, I'll bet my stories are a hell of a lot better than yours. And she slowly moves her face and her lips in close to an attack position. Come on. I have a Speedo at home that's older than you. She brushes me off saying, you couldn't come close to my stories. You ever done crack? Uh, no, I stopped at mescaline and coke. Obviously, you didn't. She again ignores my comments. Well, what comedians do you like? Sarah Silverman, Andy Kaufman, I guess uh, Richard Pryor and Lenny Bruce are my all-time favorites. Wow, you know everybody thinks I am Sarah Silverman? Really? Actually, in a dark bar with a couple drinks, it means she does look like Sarah Silverman. And Andy Kaufman is my hero. He was my role model. She rests her hand on my thigh. My Cialis instantly kicks in, killing <laughs> my body, I'm, I'm 40 years old again. And Jack Daniels is agreeing with him. He's whispering in my head, go for it, man, you could do this. She <laughs> seems pretty intelligent, somewhat creative, very attractive, very sexy, and very fucked up. Just my kind of girl. I give her my card, I actually invited her to the show tonight. You're not out there, are you, Sarah? <laughs> <laughs> Why do they still entice me, these beautiful, intelligent crazies? Do they see the leftover crazy in these old eyes, past the wrinkles and the beat-up face? Shouldn't she be able to see in me that it doesn't work? I'm living proof. I have the scars of battles lost with crazy drugs and booze. More important, why do I feel this incredible emotional and sexual magnetism here? It's an old feeling. I miss it. I, it feels good. Is it just the Jack Daniels and the Seattle's purely a chemical reaction? <laughs> I don't think so. I know better, but still, I want to throw her in the back of a 60 Triumph Bonneville, race off to some cheap motel and make hard bandit love to her. We're crazy, that's what we do, ain't it? Feel bad tomorrow, fuck it. <laughs> We're both losers, heading for a Bonnie and Clyde ending. Pablo Picasso, Sarah Silverman, two fucked up souls irreversibly driving into a head-on, dead-on collision. She leans in and she hugs me way too tight. I feel myself wanting a lot more, but you know, sometimes age actually imparts little bits of wisdom. And I grab my camera and I head for the door. She says, hey, Pablo, why are you leaving, man? I've been in the same sad movie way too many times. I just can't hang around for that bad ending anymore. <laughs> Anybody remember Johnny E? Yeah, I didn't think so. You can always find Johnny E at the end of the bar for happy hour over at the International on First Avenue and 7th Street. Three Fingers Bushmill, neat. Always dressed to the nines with a carefully arranged and shellacked comb over and wearing that classic powder blue polyester sport coat he got back in 72 on his way home from Vietnam. Can't button it anymore, but he's still wearing it. Hey, Johnny E, I haven't seen you for a while. How you doing? Half. Fucking ambulance took me over to Bellevue Emergency instead of the VA hospital. Eight weeks I'm there with pneumonia, and then the fuckers told me I got a bad liver to boot. And my goddamn landlord, he rented out my apartment to a woman with two kids. Of course, he hasn't heard from me. He thinks I'm dead. 35 years of my life, he throws in a fucking dumpster. And my car's missing. I go down to the tow pound. They said they auctioned off my car for 75 bucks. They said I owe $2,300 in storage fees, fines, and tow charges. I got 468 bucks of my saving account. I'm running out of fucking options here, you know? He spends happy hours at the International for a few more weeks till the stash runs out. Just trying to stay warm and keep a little buzz going. Weather gets colder, panhandling ain't working for him. I run into him again, he's sleeping on a heat vent by the Chase Bank over on 2nd Avenue. I spot him at 20, I hit. Hey, Johnny E, how you doing, man? Hey, rejoice, rejoice, we got no choice, right? Maybe I need to try the VA again, huh? You know, I was a door gunner on a UE back in Vietnam. Company A, 1st Battalion, 35th Infantry. No retreat, no surrender. Fucking A, brother, I lit up a lot of fucking VC with that Big 50, man. They owe us something, right? I don't see Johnny anymore that winter on the street or at the International. <laughs> Late one night, I'm over at the Black and White on 10th Street. I run into Harry the Hat. Out of nowhere, he says, hey, remember Johnny E? Frankie the cop tells me they found him over in the room over at the St. Mark's Hotel back in February, dead. 
laying face down on a Swanson TV dinner, mac and cheese, I think he said it was. Still wearing that fucking polyester sport coat. Frankie said nobody cleaned his body. Hey, can you believe that shit? Hey, Omar, three fingers Bushmill, neat. With Johnny E. No retreat, no surrender. Fucking A, brother. I don't know exactly when or what the fuck happened, but nobody wants to get crazy anymore. Nobody seems to have the need to blow off steam and scream once in a while. After a couple of weeks of trying to be normal, we need to get crazy here. Only for a couple hours, just to try and stay sane. <laughs> All I get crazy, friends, keep getting married, getting sober, getting religion, getting in rehab, getting in shape, or getting dead. We parted our way through a lot of generations to get crazy, friends, and we keep losing them to real life. Nobody wants to get crazy anymore? What the fuck? Follow us at our next reading. If you want to know who we are, pick up a program. Otherwise, good night. Yeah.